Welcome to episode number five of the Justin Eddie Russell Show. Yeah. So, the uh, COVID-19 um, restrictions have been reduced. Uh, I don't even know what the rules are. I actually haven't even looked at them. But what I have noticed is a lot of people out and about. Uh, we went for a drive yesterday, um, to, I oh, don't know, some, like, I think, I think it was like Ferny Hills or some shit. Um, I don't really know Brisbane that, that well, even though I've lived here for almost five years. Um, I still am getting to know it quite a bit. Um, but yeah, there's fucking people everywhere. Like, people are, are, are dying to, um... To get out of the house and really, uh, you know, do something with themselves. Um, which is, it's kind of cool to see. Like, it feels like to a degree things are kind of getting back to normal. Even though they're kind of not. Um, but, <sighs> I mean, it's something to look, you know, it's something to look forward to. Um, it's kind of cool that we... Uh, you know, at least allowed to. I think it's like you get to like travel about 50 kilometers or some shit at the moment where it used to be 25, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Uh, cool thing that I have done this week is... I bought an audio book. Uh, it's called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. It's fucking really cool. Um, so, I mean, I think that reading the book would have been great anyway because it has a lot of good messages in it and... Um, the thing that I like about the audio book, though, is that it's sort of like an audio back, oh, audio book slash podcast. So the really cool thing about it is that there is a fella, I think his name's Adam, that David Goggins was working with, who helped, I believe, put, you know, you know, helped him put together the book in the first place. I believe. I'm not really sure on that one. You probably have to research it. And I don't have my phone, so I can't. I mean, I would do it on this computer, but it's a really slow computer, and uh, it I'll risk um, having the video and everything drop out because um, this computer can't handle shit. It's a very old computer. I think I overuse it quite a bit, and I was supposed to upgrade years ago, which I did... And then, um, as soon as I upgraded, I bought this refurbished computer and, uh, there were still issues with it. And so I had to take it back in and then I just never ended up getting another computer, which is really strange, but that's just how I work. I, I wait till things get super bad before I do anything about them. Um, which is probably the reason why I end up reading this or listening to this audio book, book in the first place because I feel like I needed something to perk me up a little bit, give me a bit of a sharp edge during these quiet times inside. Um, he tests you, man. He he really gets you to sort of think about what you want to achieve and... Um, and how to go about achieving those things. And he has this really um, funny way of motivating you by saying things like not everybody is going to is going to um, be able to pull some of the things off that he's talking about. And I think that gets you motivated, man, because when someone says you can't do something when someone tells you that, that that you you know you're incapable of achieving something you automatically go into this zone in your head where you're like fuck off you tell me i can't do something i'm gonna achieve it and i think that's the whole idea 
he literally just wants to motivate people. He has seen that um, although uh, this generation would not like to admit it, we're born into a pretty soft and comfortable environment. Um, and if you read or listen to his audio book, you'll realize how much of a hard motherfucker this guy really is. And um, I've, yeah, the like the thing that I really enjoyed about it was that, and like I'm not, you know, I like after listening to it, I was like, you know, I need to share this with people. I um, if you if you haven't read it. I just feel like compelled to tell people about it just because I feel like already I've only just finished it. And by the way, um, if you are a person that struggles with reading in the first place, like me, uh, getting an audiobook is really fucking, um, is a very useful thing to, to get a hold of because um, instead of reading, like the way I've, broken it down like if i wanted to read a book you need to find the time to sit down where you know you can be relaxed enough or have enough time to actually sit down and and open up a book and read one Uh, and then when you are reading sometimes you don't really take everything in because your mind kind of drifts off into other areas that, you know, you, you're sitting there, you're sitting down uh, reading this book and then you're thinking, oh, you know, something else comes onto your mind. I know that happens to me a lot. Like I'll think about, oh, I need to do the dishes or I need to clean my work clothes or I need to do some sort of chore that I'm, that I'm neglecting. Um, and I think that, I tell myself oh, I need to read it. Like you know, I sit down to read this book because I want to consume it. But to a certain degree, maybe I am procrastinating a little bit. And the good thing, you know, procrastinating, trying to get away from all those chores and things that I need to do in the house and in my life, like maybe go for a walk, go for a jog, do something that's sort of like good for you. And so. Sometimes when you sit down, well, when I when I sit down and I go to read a book, I feel like I'm, even though I do feel good, like I've read a, like I've started to read a book, I'd probably only get through a few paragraphs or a few pages and then I'm like, you know, oh, I've done enough. Now I can move on to the next thing, I suppose. But the good thing with the audio book is that you can just, if you got the opportunity, maybe you're, you're driving to work, it'd be the perfect time. Like when you're driving to work, you might only get 15 minutes uh, of time to listen to it. But um, if you're lucky like me, sometimes you get to, uh, you know, I spend a lot of my time in a front end loader. So I can just plug in and, you know, for a good three hours or so at a time, I can just sit down and and listen to this, this person talk about his life. And... Uh, I felt really compelled to to share it with people because he has these challenges. There's 10 challenges and there's 11, oh, 11 chapters in the book and he gives you 10 challenges. Um, through each chapter, he'll, he'll break down a challenge and I'm only really doing the first one at the moment and I already, already understand and feel why the first challenge could be useful. Um, Because he gets you to sort of break down disadvantages in your life or things that you feel like might be a disadvantage, like whether or not you were bullied at school or, um, I don't know, just anything maybe your disadvantage is yourself, he sort of describes, like maybe... Maybe you're getting in the way of achieving goals. Maybe you were um, brought up in a sheltered household where, you know, maybe you were given more than you probably um, was healthy for you or something. And um, maybe the weight of the world 
might be too heavy on your shoulders and and you're the one stopping yourself from learning challenges or going through challenges and learning things and maybe um i don't know maybe you were maybe things between you and your parents weren't that good like just disadvantages like things that really like get to you and that's like the first challenge so far and I've only just like started to write the things down that I feel like could have impacted me and then what he does is he gets you to sort of write those things down and then own those things so like your disadvantages are um, something that make you who you are and whether or not you think it makes you good or make or makes you you know usually it he's i think he's trying to get you to go back through the bad things so that you can address the bad things and then whatever you're not good at get better at to make yourself a better human being ultimately in the end of, uh, you know at the end of the day and i've only just started like writing those things down and like trying to like and mind you going through those things that you feel like are a disadvantage to you it's kind of hard because you kind of have to revisit things that you might not really want to think about and although it can be painful and kind of like upsetting to think that you're thinking about disadvantages and and perhaps negativities um addressing those uh issues is actually very invigorating um and maybe it gives you an opportunity to address certain issues in your life that you haven't ever done in your life and you kind of start to really look inward understand who you are as a person and whenever you're going through a challenge you you start to think about you know sometimes when you're going through something really rough you'll think about I know uh, maybe you're trying to achieve something and you might say to yourself like oh you know the reason why I can't achieve this goal that I'm trying to achieve is because of this and perhaps you know you kind of make an excuse for yourself as to why you have a disadvantage and so uh, you know addressing those disadvantages um makes you know when those challenges come around and you feel like you know you feel in yourself you know the reason why i can't do so and so is because of this because you've already addressed those disadvantages you already understand who you are you already understand those disadvantages and so when the challenges come up and you feel like feeling sorry for yourself you just go no like fuck it um i'm not going to feel sorry for myself today i understand what my disadvantages are and i'm going to work my ass off to get better at those disadvantages or own um certain things that happen to you like if you if you're bullied at school you get to be like, I was bullied at school. Who? That's, you know, you might say things like, oh, the reason why I gave up something was because I was bullied by someone and it pushed me out of us, you know, it pushed me out of something. Um, and now knowing that, you can go, all right, this person bullied me out of something that I enjoyed doing back when I was at school. Some, you know, I really liked playing a sport and someone bullied the shit out of me and now and and when i was a kid after i kept getting getting bullied the shit out of i didn't really feel like playing that sport anymore and when and when you and so that's not really nice like you you know you might like i don't know doing you know bike riding or something at the skate bowl and some fucking asshole gives you gives you a a hard time then all of a sudden you don't feel like going to the fucking skate bowl anymore that's not fucking fair and so these people do that to you and you understand that that's what happened to you and you know whatever else because you've addressed that disadvantage you can kind of say to yourself well now that that's now that i understand why that happened i 
will not let it happen to me again. And if someone tries to put their negativities onto me um, and stop me from doing something that I love doing, um, because you've already addressed those things, you just fucking... Phew, I don't give a shit anymore. This person, who, who the... F and I recently had that sort of, um, that feeling um, recently where I felt this compelling feeling that I was just like, you know, there's no one, like, sometimes you, you feel in yourself like you feel like you're not worthy. And then, especially after reading this book, or listening to the book, I was just like, I have this compelled drive to completely obliterate all of those negativities out of my way. So when someone's like, you know, trying to make me feel bad about us, you know, you know, not make, you know, I don't know, you might, they might try to pick at something that you're doing or poke holes in your personality or poke, poke holes in, in a skill like, oh, you, you know, you, oh, you're not that good at this or, um, you know, just try to tear you down in general. Yeah, oh, I, ha I had that feeling of like, f you know, feeling like I wasn't worthy of a particular goal and it was just like, well, who the fuck gets to tell me whether or not I am capable or or worthy of anything? No motherfucker gets to tell me whether I'm worthy of anything. I get to tell me who I'm fucking worthy of, what I'm fucking worthy of. Um, and yeah, so... I mean, you can tell that I've got a lot of time to think now because of all this fucking shit that's going on. Like, we get to spend so much time by ourselves and think about things and really, like, look inward and then try to improve ourselves. I think that that's exactly what I've been trying to do. And um, by doing, you know, he talks a lot about, like, going through pain and going through things and doing things that you don't like doing. And so, you know, I've only just started, like, trying to apply some of those things that he talks about, you know, I'm talking about the book, um, David Goggins, you know, I'm only just starting to apply some of those, some of those traits and, and things that he talks about to my life. So only, like, I've only just finished it, and I already feel like I've got this or like my mind has now been sharpened so that I can like now address certain things. And um, yeah, I've only just begun. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And I already feel fucking awesome um, as far as like in my mindset, um, which is, I remember back when I used to play um, soccer, um, our coach used to explain to us that the reason why you stop yourself from pushing through uh, physical exhaustion is because your mind tells you to stop. So you could be running around fucking crazy on the field when you're playing soccer or when you're playing football or something and the and the reason why you you know you get really tired and you don't really feel like pushing yourself to the next level and the and and the thing that stops you from doing that is all mental and if you can control your mind if you can say to yourself you know if you're you know you're bur you know your lungs are burning cuz you're drawing in so much like cold air and and your your muscles are aching and burning like battery acid or something and, and you know you really feel like you've given everything that you've got and and you feel like you can't go any further you can start to control your mind and 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 tell yourself 
I've actually got fucking more in the tank and I can go harder than this. Despite how I feel right now, I'm just going to push through to the next level. And I just remember um, our coach telling, talking to us about sort of stuff. And it was just, it was just interesting, like to have though, you know, that idea validated by someone who's so, who, who has been so successful as David Goggins um and and the, the most amazing thing about this book and, and this person is that like from where he started off which was like in the slumps of nowhere man like he started off from nowhere and everything that he did he did by himself which sometimes it gets people like when someone says that they achieved something as great as what he did so this guy was he was almost in like i think it's called delta force in the american army which is like one of the most prestigious ranks in the military like in the in the world like it's it's like the top shit like he talks about it but basically it's like the you know the the you know, the group that went in and 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 killed Osama bin Laden. They're like that kind of kind of group. They're like, they're like the tip of the spear, is what he says. He calls it the tip of the spear of the of the of the armed forces. Like they they're the ones that do the most dangerous shit and and the really fucking hectic stuff. And so this guy was like a part of that. Like I mean, he didn't get in because of certain reasons um, that he explains in the book. So I won't, like, if you want to go through and, and you know, and, and, and read it for yourself, I won't tell you about what happened. But um, this guy achieved some fucking cool stuff, man, with little to no guidance. And I'm not saying, like, like... He, you know, he's. I'm not saying that he had even the slightest bit of guidance. He had no guidance. Like his parents, even though he describes like you know his mother and all and all, you know she was obviously a loving person. Probably to a degree didn't have the skill sets to really guide herself let alone another person and which is by what I could get I could get from the book and so this person by sheer will and and sheer determination got to I suppose just under the tip of the spear (laughs) which makes you think like with a bit of guidance what more could he have done and, and and some people, because I did this when I first listened to it, I was like, oh, you know, you kind of po- poke holes in the story where you kind of go, oh, well, if he did this, then he could have had this. Like, you know, if he had better nutrition or, you know, if he just ate better or something, you know, and you kind of start poking holes in the story but then you just have to but then i realized that that's not the point the point is that this person with no guidance no knowledge of nutrition no understanding of how the body works and what to do to make your body work to its fullest just somebody who just gave something a go and gave it everything he had and still achieved absolute greatness because he taught his mind not to give up through through his mental attitude he taught himself never to give up just because he feels like shit doesn't mean he should stop 
and so that's the whole point of the of the idea and like i i I can imagine there will be people that will probably listen to this and then go and listen to the audio book or read the book and i feel like you'll probably do the same thing too where you kind of go why the fuck did he do it like that for why didn't he do this to achieve this or you start trying to poke holes and then by the the book's really well written like the way that they wrap everything up and the way they talk about things um the way they tell you information and then wrap it up it, especially you know towards the end of the book they really wrap it up really well um it gives you this deep understanding into his mindset and really kind of from a bystander's point of view it gives you an insight into his head and you kind of and you have this kind of like ah moment ah right because there's some things that he goes through and some things that he does that is just so insane that you just think if you know you you could have avoided those things by doing this sort of stuff by you know by doing things what you might call the correct way or whatever you, you know you you'll under, if you read the book you'll understand what i'm saying and i, I don't i you know i understand that it must be frustrating too cuz you probably want to like get more information out of me about that type of thing um because i'm leaving it quite kind of broad um but the the thing the, all i can really say is that it gives you a really good indication of um why pushing yourself through hardships is necessary and that the capabilities of you know of humans is so far beyond what we might anticipate and he is such a great example because with no knowledge with no guidance of how to achieve a goal and with just sheer determination was able to push himself to the absolute pinnacle of of achievements and and with some of us that have been you know some of us have been brought up with way more guidance than this than this person has had and choose to dwell on our disadvantages and not really act on what we do have and, and or not and we don't try to improve what we're ba- what we're worst at instead we'll make excuses for why we can't achieve something and we'll say things along the lines of like i said before i haven't achieved this because i don't have this or i haven't achieved something because my parents you know weren't there for me or something you know you come up with some type of an excuse as to why you haven't achieved a certain goal that you want to achieve and some of us have had you know this is a man that started off in in a very difficult and abusive household and um there there are also other ways of looking at it too and this is a, another excuse that i feel like i am definitely guilty of that you start to think to yourself you know you, you see all of these people that have been brought up in abusive households or like rough households 
and you, and they rise up to be something great and you might start thinking to yourself you know maybe maybe my parents raised me too well um you know you know maybe I was too loved and and you think to yourself oh you know maybe with a little bit more tough love I could have had you know maybe I could endure some of the more harder things in life with you know because I would be a tougher person and that is just another excuse so that is something that you can write down and say my you know perhaps maybe your disadvantage was that you were brought up in too much of a soft household and so that is your disadvantage so how can I improve myself um from that disadvantage instead of saying I don't have this because because I was raised too soft you just say well I was raised too soft all right that's who I am how do I get fucking better at that how do I how do I be less soft maybe like maybe that's maybe that's something that you know you're going through um but yeah, I, f I found it really, really inspiring, really good. Um, that's something that I've been trying to do is like fill my Instagram feeds with, with inspiring people and um, not necessarily just motivational speakers, but like people that have actually gone out and, you know, achieved great things. And mind you, a lot of it's very athletic and I'm, you know trying to achieve things in like an artistic realm but I feel like you can apply the same mentality to anything that you do you know with hard work and determination um, you can really achieve great things like for example um, I could be doing vocal exercises every day it's not like I don't have the time but that's the problem isn't it that when you get given too much time sometimes you don't use it wisely um, sometimes and that's the thing pushing yourself through those things that you don't want to do will make you feel better about doing them because you know, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to do vocal exercises today. But after I've done it and my voice feels fucking nice and relaxed and and whatever, you know, it feels good and ready to go. After I've done it, I'm like, well, fucking, I'm so glad that I've done that. And I'm even prouder of myself, if that's a word, prouder. I'm even more proud of myself for doing it because I did it at a time that, I didn't want to do it. I, I went through that hardship and now I'm, you know, it's not really hard. It's, you know, it's, it's achievable. It's fucking me just being a bitch because I just, I'm feeling lazy today. I don't want to fucking do it. Just, you know, if, by, but by pushing through it, you're like, okay, I've done that today. I can, I can feel good that I've done it now. And, um, I'm hoping that, because it all seems like big preparation, like, and you know, a massive preparation, and you think to yourself, oh, it's a lot of effort. Like, that's me, man. I'm, I'm 100%, uh, you know, I'm, I am a millennial, and I take fucking millennialism extremely, not seriously, but I take it, to the extreme, bro, like, I, I fucking watch Netflix a lot, and stand and shit, like, I come into my house, and there's, you know, there's things that are just fucking comfortable, and, you know, I, oh, you know, I could just fucking come back from work, and just sprawl out on my couch, and just be a fucking, you know, a fucking bitch about everything, and, and whatever, um, 
but yeah, I I, I kind of want to like start to re think my approach to my days, which I I feel like I have done it to a certain degree, and some of the things that I have done in the past and have sort of like improved on over the years and um some of the, even some of the concepts that I've had in my mind and things that I've said out loud to like my girlfriend or something uh he sort of touches on which makes me feel good about myself because it's like well at least I am in the right direction but this will just be an acceleration um, down the right path even more so, and um, so where like, what I what, you know roughly on a you know, usually it, when I start work it'll be like five o'clock in the morning, so wake up at four, fucking make make my lunch, have a coffee. Um, I don't eat anything because I can't be fucking bothered stomaching food and so I don't eat breakfast and a lot of people say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day but um fuck off I'm not eating breakfast <laughs> unless I'm really starving um yeah fucking make my lunch sink a coffee drive to work and then you know start my day and so, it requires me to go to, you know, if I want to get eight hours in, it requires me to go to bed at, you know, eight o'clock. And so, I thought to myself, you know, 7.30 is a very early time to go to bed, but it's fucking doable. My job is very irregular and very sporadic. So, usually, at the moment, I've been starting at 5 fairly frequently like fairly reliably but every now and then I'm starting at fucking 4 th 4.30 and sometimes on the very rare occasion at the moment we'll start at times like 3.30 which is I mean it's fucking pretty early like that is pretty fucking early alright like I didn't care what anybody says that's a fucking early time to start um and, like, don't get me wrong, I haven't, you know, we don't do that all the time, but every now and then when it hits you, it fucking sucks. But I've got a bit of a structure at this stage. So maybe I can wake up at 3.30, go for a jog in the morning, which still sounds like, like, it still sucks. Like, the idea of it, I'm like, fuck me, get up at fucking 3.30 to go for a jog in the morning before I start work. And who knows, I could, like, that's what I'm saying, my job is very sporadic. I could do a 12-hour day. Like, for example, it was, I think it might have been Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday. And it was a slow fucking day, like, we didn't do anything, we, like, like, it was a pretty relaxed day. Like, we weren't really that flat out. Okay, you get the point. It was a slow day. And I literally thought, or, f you know, I thought that we were going to be able to finish even at, like, 2, 2.30, which is pretty good. Uh... No, I ended up doing a 12, 12 and a half hour day that day. And I didn't even realize that that was what I was going to do. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, fuck, we'll probably wrap it up at about 2.30. .30. All of a sudden, a customer books something in. And I'm, you know, and then my boss has to, to go because it was his um, wedding anniversary, which is totally understandable. He was supposed to be sipping wine with his wife, um somewhere you know at Bribey Island and you know as if I'm going to stop a man from going to go you know to ha hanging out with his wife on his anniversary so I stick around and end up doing a 12 and a half hour day 
And I thought, fuck, dude. I thought I was only going to be doing, like, 10 hours at the fucking absolute most. You know, at the absolute maximum. So I could have been finishing it, like, you know, 9 hours or whatever. So, wake up, 3.30, go for a jog, start my day, maybe I'll do 12 hours. That's, you know, what I would imagine I would, you know, always just, I always just tell myself, I'm doing 12 hours today, so then when it's under that, it's like, ah, fucking, that wasn't so bad. And then if it is 12 hours, you're like, well, that's what I expected. Try to like, you know, reverse psychology, I suppose. And so that idea totally sucks in my head, but I'm, you know, if I could pull it off, I'm pretty sure I'd feel awesome about it. And, and then once you've gotten that exercise out of your, out of the way and out, you know, that is out of your way, no more, you don't have to do that exercise anymore. And even though it's early and all over it's fucking, you can complain about it, you've done it. And then when you get back home, um, you know, play some guitar, write a fucking melody, do some vocal exercises, hang out with your missus like you've got all that time and you don't have to sit there and think, oh, did I, I should have gone for a jog today, but I didn't. Hmm. So I thought... I'd, uh, seeing as it's the weekend, I would get a fucking head start. Well, not a head start, just fucking started. And just see, you know, it's fucking, it's a Sunday, right? And so, usually Sundays are for sleeping in. So, I, instead, I got up at 4.30 this morning and, you know, had a coffee, went for a jog come back, came back and did some yoga in the morning and then did some meditation and don't get me wrong, I felt fucking exhausted afterwards and while I was doing the meditation, I felt, I felt like I was going to sleep. I had to, it, 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 what I couldn't work out, I don't know if I was going to sleep or I was in deep meditation but something tells me it was more more sleepy sleepiness than deep meditation i felt like my knees were like floating up to my head and i felt like i had pins and needles in in my hands and like they were molding into my legs so i think to a degree it was deep meditation i don't know if that is what deep meditation is supposed to feel like because i'm an absolute noob to this sort of stuff but i'm exploring it and i am enjoying it and, um, but something tells me that, like, that deep relaxation definitely came from being tired. Um, and I have been a little bit grumpy today, just because, you know, I didn't get to bed as early as I would have liked to have. Um, so I've been pretty tired, but I've got that under my, under my, you know, I've got that feather under my cap now where I get to say to myself that that's what I did and that's what I achieved. And it's only one day. So I'm sure that when I give it a go the next day, tomorrow, which is a public holiday, I've been having a lot of fucking public holidays. That's the best thing about the um, start of the year. Like, it's only fucking April, and we've had shit tons of public holidays, which I'm not complaining with. I fucking love it. Um... And yeah, so tomorrow is a public holiday. Uh, I I, I want to so you know, I wanted to start it on days where I felt um, at ease with first, and just sort of ease my way into it, because I feel like kind of scared that I'm gonna go and do this jog in the morning. And then, like, get back to the house way too late. And then I'm like, fuck, i got to get to work. Um, that's one thing that I'm... 
I'm actually that's the one thing that I do get really worried about ta- you know doing exercise in the morning before work that you might take it too far or like forget that or not forget but just like you know some things just happen sometimes things just take longer you know you know, in, you know things take longer one time than they do another I don't know, you, maybe you might pull a muscle and then you can't go to work because you, you've just fucking pulled a muscle. And although you, you can call in sick, um, you know, you don't you don't want to you don't want to be doing that all the time, do you? But yeah, and I suppose that is an excuse that I'm building up in my head, in my head, where I'm like, ah, you can do it in the afternoon, and the problem is, I've, you know, I put that stuff in my head all the time, I'm like, oh, you can do it in the afternoon, and for a while, I kept that consistent, but I have found that when you put things off, you usually put them off so far that you end up not doing them at all, and, um, I'm starting to realize that whenever you have the the opportunity to do something, uh, do it right then and there. As soon as you have the opportunity, just fucking do it because you might not have another one, especially as you get a bit older into adult adult life, your adulthood life, fucking all that shit. Um, things just start to stack up in your life and, and then you realize, oh, fuck, I've got... I've got no time, and you just got to um, jump on the opportunities that life gives you sometimes. That was one thing in the book that I actually experienced, experienced this morning, um, is that he has this thing called the accountability mirror. I think that's stage two. Um, and so, or something like that, I think it's that one, or it could be, it could be still on number one, anyway, he talks about when he's going through, because he, this guy was a Navy SEAL, I don't know if I, I don't, I didn't say that before, so this guy was a Navy SEAL, and he went through some pretty hectic training to get into the into the Navy SEALs to begin with, so it's pretty hectic anyway. But he talks about think you know, because when you go to do something like that, you you are more than welcome to walk straight out of that training. If if at any time it gets too much for you, there's no one stopping you from quitting. There's no one stopping you from just walking out. And, and ringing the bell and see you later, I've had enough. <laughs> no one's stopping you from doing that. And in, and in fact, the you know, the the people that are training you, the drill sergeants, um, they encourage you to leave. They want to make you feel so, they want to make you feel in pain. And they tell you, we're going to make you fucking quit, according to the book. Um... Obviously, I've got no experience in the matter, so I'm only, you know, but like, so that, you know, they want you to quit. And so, sometimes when you're doing things for yourself and, and, and things are getting too hard or things feel really hard and you feel like, you know, you know, not getting out of bed, sometimes the questions come up, why am I doing these things? And he talks about having the answers right at your fingertips like i think it is i think it is stage number it's one i think it one and two something like that or might 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 be number 3 anyway he talks about having like these the, the answers right at your fingertips because sometimes when you're under so much pressure um and you can't think and you ask yourself why the fuck am i doing this you need to have those answers right right away. You need to have those answers at your fingertips and you need to understand them uh, r- as soon as that comes into your head. And you need to have that motivation 
that those answers to those question to that question why am i doing this having those answers at the ready keeps you motivating keeps you going and so this morning i had my alarm set i will i will admit i had my alarm set at four o'clock but i slept in till 4 30 because you know i fucking bitched out and then i asked myself the question why the fuck do you know why and then i was like oh i get what he's saying now i understand what he means like you just think why the why am i and then you go because i want to do it for myself and i start and like having as soon as i answered that question and i had that question at the and i had the answer at the ready i was out of bed then i was like fuck popped up out of bed i was still tired it was cold you know this weekend being the coldest weekend of the month you know of of uh winter so far um you know being it's a fucking cold weekend that's what i'm saying um and, and it's been the coldest that it's been in forever and i mean australia has been hot as fuck so we're allowed to we're allowed to complain about a little bit of cold at the moment. I know other places are colder. I get it, but Australia is hot as fuck right now. And anyone that you know is listening to this will totally understand what I'm saying. And if for some reason someone over in another country is listening to me talk about uh, the heat in Australia. And, 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 you know, and, and now I'm talking about cold shit and, and they're wondering how, you know, how, you know, how are you talking about cold stuff when Australia is so hot? It's because it's been so fucking hot that when it gets cold, it feels fucking cold. That's it. That's all I'm saying. And so it's fucking freezing to me. I get up out of bed. No slippers. Like a fucking champion. <laughs> no slippers. Fucking coal floorboards. Fucking, you know, timber floorboards. Of course I got trackies on. I walk in, go, you know, go make myself a coffee. Fucking get ready to, to, to fucking saddle up and go for a big jog. You know, I will... To me, I don't even know how far it was. I just go and I, I go along a, a certain track, and um, you know, I know, I I suppose I know when enough is enough. Um, you know, when you get to a certain point and you're like, oh, I'm feeling tired now, and even though, and even though at this stage, I I guess you know I'm talking about pushing through. And you know, and things like that. I, I, I feel like I probably could have pushed further. Actually, I actually was thinking that I could probably go further. So maybe I'll try that tomorrow and, and just try to go a little, just try and go a tad bit further. And um, you know, he talks about those sorts of things too, where it's like, you know, okay, so this guy. I'm just going to give you a little bit of information about it, just so that you would kind of understand who this kind of dude is. So, he... I don't... Oh, fuck, I wish I got my phone. Because I don't know what um, 100 miles is in, in kilometres. Um, but he did this 100, 100 mile race with no preparation. And the day before... He was doing a weight session with one of his buddies that involved deadlifts and, and all kinds of like leg workouts. And anyone, anyone that understands, you know, like gym lingo, when you do squats or dead, especially deadlifts, man. His legs would have been fucking dead. Like, you you know, if you just do deadlifts at all and you do any leg workout at all and then try to walk, it's like trying to balance on jelly. You're just, 
like, you know, your legs are fucked. And especially the next day, they feel sore. And, and you don't feel like fucking running, bro, because your legs are sore. This dude, who's just done a fucking intense leg workout the day before, goes and does a hundred mile marathon with no preparation. Who the fuck does that? This dude does, obviously. And, um... Yeah. He just fucking... He did that shit. And, um... He talks about how, like, you don't have to go from zero to a hundred in one go like he did. But, you know, most of us are only putting in about 40% of our lives. We're only putting 40% effort into our lives. And you can get to 100%. Not you don't have to do it as intensely as he did, as he did it, and and in fact he encourages you not to do that. Um, but you can gradually get to that certain point, and like, and and that's the thing, like that's what I'm, I think that's what I'm trying to get at, and what it's probably hard to understand from and from you know, my basic ass talking about it. Um. Is that with the certain pre- with the, with the right preparation, and, and and you know you know him taking th- things step by step, and not completely fucking destroying his body, you know maybe he could have reached his ultimate goal. Maybe he could have done that. And I think that's what he he's trying to say is that. You know, I achieved what I achieved with no knowledge of what he was doing he had no knowledge of what he was what he you know how do I achieve this goal I he had no idea how to go about certain things and and, you know he's trying to tell you tell us as as a fucking human race that we have so much more left within us that we can give that we choose not to do we we choose not to push past um that negative mindset that tells us to stop which is complete you know it's completely natural to want to take the easy route and it, and even though you you know you say to yourself or oh, you know I don't want to take the easy route Sometimes you just do, like you just do sometimes, and that is just how humans think, and that's how we have gotten to where we are in with humanity now. Like we've got so much, you know, we've got cars that we drive to work with, and you know, we we have so much um, luxury, especially in you know, the Western world, like right at our fingertips that we that we just you know i suppose we even take for granted yeah we just um that you know maybe um pushing ourselves to to our limits in other ways might be might be um a healthy choice for us it, i think he talks about how pain is good for you and I, you know people's instant reaction is why the fuck would you want to put yourself through pain it's not just physical pain it's like mental pain it's um spiritual pain and you know all that sort of stuff it's so inspiring and um yeah I uh, I really hope that I can continue. You know, when I say I hope, I want to hold myself accountable, and I want to push through these sort of certain things because 
I know what it takes to achieve certain things. Is it hard? Yeah, of course it is. But it's not about being the best in the world. It's being it's about being the best that you can be. And when you put yourself first, when you tell yourself, I want to be the best that I can be, it takes all this weight off your shoulders. You don't have to compete with anybody. You're competing with yourself. How far can I take myself? How far can I take it? Whatever it is you want to take something, whatever it is, you know, it could be fucking, today I want to, I want to read an entire book, an entire 11 chapter book, alright, well, fucking, go for it, mate, challenge yourself, and, um, whatever else, anyway, we, I have sat here for an entire hour, talking to you guys about one book and I had certain things in my head that I wanted wanted to talk about but I always think about it after it's after the fact I feel like I could possibly sit here for two hours and talk your fucking ear off um about absolute bullshit which is what this is all about anyway it's just me talking shit um and that's the thing, like, I might have things in my head that I want to talk about, but none of the things that I, none of it's planned, I don't have a script, I don't have anything that, you know, I, I'll just make a mental note, and I'll say, oh, I'll talk about this, I suppose, and and like, just before, when I sat down to do this podcast, it was just like, you know, I was just playing um, The Last of Us again, and I got really fucking shitty, I got really mad, because I kept losing all the time, and um, I went, fuck it, I'm turning it off, and and then I sat down, and I was like, well, screw it, I'll fucking, I'll do a podcast, I'll do a podcast episode, and then and, and I sit down, and then whatever comes to my head gets churned out into your ear holes. Um, but yeah, I have sat here for an entire hour and I have chewed your ear off about this David Goggins book and I will absolutely encourage you to go out and buy the audio book, buy the book, read it, listen to it. Um, even if you do buy the book, go ahead and do the audio book too because the podcast, the podcast slash audiobook is really cool, they unpack, as they go through the book, they unpack it at the same time, they talk about and break things down and, and gives you a further understanding into his mindset and what he's trying to achieve out of writing this book and telling um, people about his life. Um, I feel like you can get a lot of out, get a lot out of the audiobook. Um, it, you know, as well as the initial story um, from his book, um, you get a lot out of them unpacking the entire book as well. So yeah, um, that was episode number five of the Justin Eddie Russell Show. I will see you at the next one. Bye-bye.